Hello and welcome back to Fable the Lost Chapters with yours truly Lord of the Mad. Hi Lord of Versus, Arbiters, Spiffening, Level 22, Boxes Madden, Cutest Viking 2013 and all around neutral guy. It is time to find the last two stones that I require. Ignore this guy, this guy is a derp. And ooh, that's a nice area. Let's diggy. Adam Sibic. Life had a nasty effect on him. But defung, Master Spellweaver. Morix tablet. Ah, yeah. Excellent. I learned another expression. Good for me. Few rights for back to two. Whoa. Relax you dude, if you're armed the two. It seems I'm getting all sorts of pure right stuff on this land. A Syme, a friend of Scythe, but another screwed of staying alive. He probably didn't have a good singing voice, that's all. Kiernan fell asleep and forgot to wake up. Jay Glover died of lead poisoning. Well in that case. Bring it. You silly bugger, stop standing in my way. I have business on the other side of this door. Move it. I was actually trying to scroll to the other weapon option. It, 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 not, it did not seem to work. Oh, shit happens. Ah, now what? Trying to appear as a threat while they're clearly not. I cannot tell if my shield is on or not. Fall over and die. Good. This is Sai, our hero. Well done. Well, thank you. You should come back to Snowspire now and see if we you've received a new quest card. See if you've received a new quest card. But first off, what's here? They still the transom victim. I could do that some other time. But for now, what is important is multi-strike. That's extremely important to me. Quite. And this is actually something I can max out. I finally found out why I cannot uh, max out Berserk, and it's something as simple as alignment. It is indeed that only the evil characters can become masters of Berserk. Sadly, I am not an evil character. Oh, so I suppose I can max out these as well. Does me no harm. The speed is actually beneficial anyway. Yeah, yeah buy the speed. Buy everything. Good. You're now stealthy enough to use the lockpick expression. Ooh. I don't care. Okay, so have a nice visit. Well, thank you. I do believe I won't. Because there's business to be done. Hello, Scythe. 
you have uncovered the glyphs. Very good. It is time we awoke the Oracle from its deathly slumber. Oh, great Oracle, grant us the knowledge we seek. What evil rises in this land? The prophecy is fulfilled. The guildsman is here. You find the mask you carry. Jack of Blades has awakened the dormant power of the summoners. He has used the blood of your family to feed his new shell beyond the Guan's gate. But now his soul mask is in your hands. You must use it to feed the Archon's shrine and open the Go now, and face your destiny. So, Jack has cheated death once more. Never have we encountered a being like him. I do not envy you. The Bronze Gate has long been a symbol of doom. Return to Briar Rose and try. Perhaps she can tell you how to use Jack's soul mask. I must return to the guild. May fate smile on you. No, so you received a new quest card. So can I burn this? We heard what the Oracle said. Meet me at the Archon Shrine in the Northern Wastes. I've made some progress with the inscriptions. So I'm apparently able to talk to the Oracle of Avishti. Have you heard? The Oracle is awake. I knew it wasn't a legend. I only wish I knew the expressions needed to question it. But wait, aren't you the one who found the glyphs? What are you waiting for? Use your expressions and ask it a question. What sort of question would I want to ask? Do I need to use all of them? Or am I at the wrong spot? Oh, very clever! Very clever indeed! Why? The sign of Yeron. You wish to know more about the people of Albion and beyond. Maybe. I know. Some interesting things about Whisper. The people of Albion can be fickle in their affections, and Whisper's inglorious defeat in the arena stripped her of any repute she may have once possessed. Ah. For many, she would never grow out of the immense shadow of her brother Thunder, and so she left our shores and set out for the distant homeland she had last seen as a child. Her sea journey was once again beset with difficulties, and her ship was boarded by pirates. None of them survived. She arrived at shores she barely remembered, with nothing but her own strength. Yet now, she is beloved as a true hero among her own people. That's nice. Anyway, I was about to make the joke. Y M C A. <laughs> Alright, um can I ask about more people? Why don't I share with you my knowledge of Yes Teresa. After walking out of the Chamber of Fate, Teresa fled to the mountains, climbing alone to their summit. There, she was taken in by Palgan, an old will user from the lands to the east. Palgan had been meditating in the thin air close to the clouds, but he offered to take her with him on returning to his homeland. One night, Razor awoke to find him performing a ritual above her, in an attempt to steal her prophetic powers. She killed him, and used the amulet that had transported him halfway across the globe. She lives.
lives in the East, though. Haunted by her past, only in rare nightmares. Alright. And another why? Ah, it's been so long since I told anyone about the Guildmaster. He may be known for his calm poise as a stern authority rather than an adventurer. But this was not always so. In his youth, when he went by the name of Weaver, he was part of a cluster of heroes, maids among them, who rebelled against the previous guild regime and its resolution of offering only virtuous quests. Much blood was spilled in this short revolt in the name of freedom, leaving the number of heroes already rare in a world of diminishing will presence at its lowest for centuries. It was Scythe who proposed Weaver as the new Guildmaster, seeing in him the serene and impartial man he would become. Someone who would leave the moral destiny of all future acolytes in their own hands. That's cool. Perhaps you would like to hear the story of Thunder. Many years ago, a ship from the South Islands was carried upon a wave mightier than any dragon. And within the ship stood the mountain-like frame of thunder. It was a storm as none aboard had ever seen. But the great warrior was concerned with one thing only. Quelling the cries of a child, his young sister, Whisper. The wave bore the vessel across vast expanses of ocean and into a nest of krakens. Thunder cast down lightning upon them, and gathering Whisper in his arms, dove into the waters. As he swam, they heard the screams of dying men and the sounds of timber torn apart behind them. It was two days before they reached the shores of Albion, leaving their home as far off as a dream. Aww. Why don't I share with you my knowledge of Briar Rose? Born into a noble family, Briar's early childhood was one of luxury and plenty. But once her strength and unique abilities began to manifest themselves, her world fell apart. Her mother died in an accident Briar could do little to prevent. Yet her grieving father cast her out, and she was left to fend for herself, learning to rely on no one. She has made the guild her home, and it is in its books that she has found the companionship she has never asked for from another living being. It was her burning quest for knowledge that sent her on journeys far beyond Albion during the time you made your mark in this world. But she is here to stay now. Alright, and now? I shall tell you about... Scythe. There is little I can tell you of Scythe's origins, for such knowledge is a mystery even to me. And as many have theorized, he may or may not be the original Archon himself. Cast into the void after catching some disease or another. Because apparently he was wearing a blue robe and, uh, you know, golden armor at the time of his departure as well. And um, there was actually more information about that on the wiki. <laughs> Which uh, you will know actually would make, almost make it sense, make it make sense even. But uh, yeah, some of the information is apparently in Fable 2 and uh, I think even Fable 3. But the 
those things are unavailable to me because I have never ha played those games. So. Yet, he is much more ancient than any of this time would believe possible, and has warped this world since long before the guild existed. It has been centuries since he's been personally involved in any action. But of those among us, only Jack of Blades has seen and done more. Well, Arkhan was apparently also the one uh, to be the one to first kill the Queen of Blades and the Knight of Blades and Jack of Blades, so it would make sense that Scythe would be younger than them, because Scythe was born already during their reign. Perhaps you would like to hear the story of Maze. Oh yes, please. You and Maze had more in common than you ever realized. He too was left alone in the world after a wave of violence took his home away. As a child, he watched his parents torn apart by Bulverines as they walked through the woods. The beasts were about to turn on him when three warriors crashed into the clearing. Two of them were guild heroes. The third was Jack of Blades. In an instant, Jack slew the Bulverines in a show of strength, then killed the heroes. Maze carried this debt all his life. It burdened his every action, and in the end, destroyed him. Indeed. Alright, another six. Ah, it's been so long since I told anyone about the archaeologist. The one who called himself the archaeologist was one of the few with a true academic interest in the Old Kingdom. But he was also a mine of disinformation, gathered from unreliable and sometimes contradicting sources. And he was too cowardly to delve far enough into the mysteries of that age. After his kidnapping by minions, he fled to the cities of the West, Disguised as a glove trader, he hasn't opened a book or stepped near a ruin since. Oh, all right. Perhaps you would like to hear the story of Whisper. Oh, apparently we're already looping. All right, I will return here in the next episode, but uh, first... Let's go talk to Briar Rose about what I can do to, s to open the bronze gate and slay Jack again. Have a safe visit. I'll try. Hey, glad you're still with us. These inscriptions are fascinating, you know. Everything indicates that Jack's new form will emerge from behind the Bronze Gate, and this structure is the key to opening it. But it looks like it'll take the souls of three heroes to activate the mechanism. These things are never simple, are they? It doesn't want just any heroes either. The first instruction calls for the King of the Arena, no less. I suppose you could chop your own head off, but then there'd be no one for me to order around, would there? <laughs> Why don't you pay Thunder a visit? He knows the arena inside and out. I've checked with the guild, and they say he's a Knothole Glade. You've still got Jack's mask, haven't you? Good. You'll need it to trap the souls. I still can't believe he might not be dead. Anyway, I'd better start researching the second inscription. Yes, little hero, I'm back. And our business is not quite finished. You destroyed my sword, remember? Have you any idea how many centuries I spent looking for it? But its work is done. Soon I will have power beyond your imagining. And you will be the first to die. 
Oh. Well, that's nice to know. Anyway, as I was planning, I will now return and start asking the M1 questions. Because I want to know everything. Everything! But it's of no consequence because I will forget everything. Everything! But for now, I will thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.